you had already worked with him in Geronimo. I did, and we got along reasonably, very, actually quite well on that. Mm -hmm. But um, somehow the magic went away on this one. And, uh, but he's very good in it. He's a wonderful actor. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't usually even say these things, Rob, but you've I pulled, draw them you've out. pulled this out of me. Because <laughs> we're having fun talking. Coming here, listening to you guys talk about uh, what's well, great to see Stephanie. I usually only see her across four tables in a restaurant. And, Who's got uh, the A table? I don't and, know. Uh, she does. She does. Deservedly. And, uh, but you guys talking about Bob Totten, who I knew years ago, uh, Warren Oates, who was a friend, Dobie Carey, who was in, I think, three of my movies. And uh, so, you know, these are old friends. With Westerns, it's a nice feeling when you see familiar faces in the Westerns because those are the people that are real. We're talking about Ben Johnson and Dobie. Dobie had such a wonderful scene in The Long Riders where he he's good in one, the yeah. coach. That's that was because of Lindsay Anderson. Lindsay introduced me, a wonderful director who wrote a book about Ford. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, Lindsay and I were friends. He asked me if I knew Dobie. I said no. He said, well, you're like John Ford. You've got to talk to Toby, of course. So he introduced us. Uh, and then he took me aside. He says, God damn it, you know, write a scene for him in your next movie. So I, it was the Long Riders, and I did write a scene for him. And uh, we did it a couple of times. But, um, you know, movies. The Long Riders, that is, is very unusual for several reasons. It's very realistic, just the, the, the locations, the, the look of it, the dialogue, the relationships. It's so different from the other uh, Jesse James Cole Younger films. And of course, you've got all the brothers playing the brothers in the film. Yeah, it was a, um, it's an odd film in a lot of ways. It's not as narrative driven as most uh, Westerns are, and, and most of the Jesse James things are. It's a pastiche. Uh, the brother thing worked out very well. I'd love to tell you that it was my idea and my entrepreneurial genius, but I, I really didn't have anything to do with it. They had organized themselves, and uh, I think this is something that uh, James and Stacy had been trying to absolutely. put together for years. Yeah, Jimmy had played Jesse in some off-Broadway play, hmm. and he had the uh, rather obvious idea, I guess. He went to Stacy and said, you know, what we ought to do, I'll play Jesse again and you can play Frank and all that kind of thing. And they were, you know, they were friends with the Carradines and uh, the Bridges were going to be in it, but that didn't work out. Um, but we had the Quades and uh, the Guest Brothers. Mm -hmm. The score, uh, Rye Cooter. It was Rye's first uh, formal score, full score, and it was his first one with me. We've done about seven or eight together, and it was, it was a beautiful piece of work mm -hmm. that he did. Yeah, very, very much of a certain time. Uh, I mean, to say by that, the, the roots of the score were very much in that part of the country, in that part of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. Worked out quite well. Mm -hmm. There's a scene where it's the first time I ever noticed James Remar with a Bowie knife fight with David Carradine. What a great scene that is. It's, it worked out. It was actually a kind of a mess when we were doing it. it uh, I have to give the great Sam Fuller credit on that. Uh, Sam and I were friendly. Uh, Bobby Carradine had played basically Sam Fuller in Sam's movie, Big Red One, and uh, Sam was in town. I used to mainly see Sam when I was in France, but uh, he was, he, he had a little house up off Woodrow Wilson. And we were shooting that, we shot that scene at uh, Warner Brothers. And we rehearsed and uh, we shot in the morning, it was, Christ, it just, nothing was working. and. Uh, I think I was not in one of my better moods, and um, um, I remember saying uh, to David and Jimmy, I said, look, this stinks, and I don't know what the hell, maybe it's the goddamn routine, or maybe it's you guys, or maybe it's me or something, but uh, uh, 
uh, there's nothing that we've done so far that looks worth a good goddamn. And um, uh, Sam Fuller's coming to lunch, and I'm sure he'll come over to the set. And if I, if I were you guys, I wouldn't want to be embarrassed this way. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so we broke for lunch, and Sam and I went off to the Warner Brothers commissary there. Anyway, we came back. And said, I mean, so I was, you know, well, Sam, we're doing a knife fight here, and we're, you know, he was, you know, and uh, so lined everybody up, I yell action, and the, the two guys almost kill each other. I mean, this is, it's a fabulous, they don't miss a trick on the routine. The intensity is great. They just, and they didn't want to look bad in front of Sam Fuller. <laughs> So, Did he stay the rest of the shoot? <laughs> I should, you know, I could have kept him around, absolutely. But um. there, there's that great line that Bell Star has, you know, it says, "I am having a good time." <laughs> you know, just the rhythm. It was just that was a nice relationship she had with uh, with uh, Cole Younger too, David's character. Well, yes, the. Um, the semi hooker with uh, <laughs> who, you know, we wanted a character that stood up for herself. I mean, historically, that was true anyway. And um, it worked out. It was a good piece of work, I, I thought. The whole, the whole movie was, it's, again, it's an odd movie. It, it, it's character driven around events, and, and yet it's an ensemble mm -hmm. uh, without. Uh, and I guess the theme of it is really, you know, the what you sow, you reap. And as Cole Younger says, we played a rough game and lost, and uh, uh, they end up sadder but wiser, or dead. And we were trying photographically to do something a little different, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's, it's a pretty movie. Mm -hmm. The film that changed AMC. AMC was called American Movie Classics and they decided to do a miniseries, and it was a Western that Walter directed, Broken Trail with uh, Robert Duvall, and it was so successful that AMC became the home to other programs like Breaking Bad, and it's, it's due to the success of your show. Well, I think it helped. I, I don't it, know that. <laughs> they woke up and said, wow, due we're not going to run Lex Barker movies anymore. <laughs> we're going to be running uh, uh, <laughs> you know, new films. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we shot it up in Canada. It was, uh, it was a bit of a mixed shoot. I think uh, it, I, I loved it. I mean, I loved shooting up there, and the Chinese girls mm -hmm. were wonderful. and. Uh, Tom Hayden Church was, you know, oh, he was he, terrific. He, he, he won an Emmy, and, and I uh, think you won an Emmy too, didn't you, for that? I did, yes. and so did Mr. Duvall. The uh, he's irascible, though. Well, my hesitation about <laughs> this has to do with uh, Bob and I uh, did not get along very well. So uh, I have great respect for him. As you had already worked with him in Geronimo, I did, and we got along reasonably, very, actually quite well on that. Mm -hmm. But um, somehow the magic went away on this one. And, uh, but he's very good in it. He's a wonderful actor. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't usually even say these things, Rob, but you've I pulled, draw them you've out. pulled this out of me. Because we're having fun talking. <laughs> I, listen, I have great respect for him as an mm -hmm. actor. And, uh, um, but but we, did, we did have a few moments, I will say. Well, I know that you're known for the great action set pieces that you have in all of your movies, and he's known for his pontificating, perhaps, his, uh, you know, it's a different... Uh, I don't think that's the word he would use. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, but it seemed to work, the final he, cut. Uh, he is looking for the spoken word, usually, mm -hmm. yes, that's, that's true. Maybe that's a kinder uh, way. And, uh, and he'd... But it works. Say, man, God damn it, we don't need another goddamn violent scene. I know that's what you want to do. <laughs> Let's sit around the campfire and yeah. talk instead. So, uh, <laughs> but, well, but, listen, he's very good at it. Yeah. I, I don't want to uh, belabor it or anything. Everybody I thought was good in that. The villains were, were mean. 
and you really uh, were able to create some nice set pieces. Thomas Hayden Church, who knew that he was such a good hand? Uh, well, Tom has his own ranch down yes. in Texas, and he's, yeah. uh, he loves westerns, yeah. and uh, he'd rarely had a chance to be in one, and he was, you know, he was very good. Mm -hmm. he, he, he really did a wonderful job. I always said it was his haircut. <laughs> very, very first scene, he takes his hat off, and he's got that, that shorn on the sides up to here. <laughs> and uh, he had to start, I told him, we've established the character now. And, uh, <laughs> you don't, well, it kind now, of made now, him geeky. Now, if we don't have to, uh, Duvall accused me of, of um, upstaging, you know, with the gesture, upstaging his part. <laughs> when Tom did this, his hat off. Well, you've given us uh, so much over the years, and we look forward to a lot more, too, Walter. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rob Ward. I hope you enjoyed A Word on Westerns. It's an interview series we do. We post a new one every single week. If you missed any, just sign up for this little baby right here. Whoa.